Hello, hello, my friends. Can you believe it? Easter is next weekend, and that means that it is late March, which also means that it is time for me to do my late March candle chat. Now, this is a video series that I like to do on my channel twice a month, where I like to talk about candles that I have brought into my monthly burning rotation. I share with you kind of like little mini reviews of some of the candles, because quite frankly, some of them haven't reached the point yet where I am ready to do a dedicated review on them. Um, I also like to give you some fragrance combinations because I am the type of person who likes to burn more than one fragrance at once. So I will typically burn a candle here in my living room and then I'll burn one in my bedroom. But I usually like those fragrances not to clash with one another. I like them to complement each other. So this is a series where sometimes I throw out some fragrance combinations for all of you. I just kind of give a little, I don't know, this is like a sit down and chat kind of like hodgepodge about candles. So if you find yourself liking this video, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you're coming across my channel for the first time, hi, I'm Katie. I love to talk all things candles here on my channel. I have this series. I do empties, I do hauls, dedicated reviews and everything in between. So if you like candle content, please consider subscribing to my channel before you get on out of here. Um, it wouldn't be one of my videos without a piece of hair getting in my mouth and me having to move it away. Uh, but why don't we go ahead and dive into what I have brought into my candle rotation during the end of this month. So if you caught my early March candle chit chat, a lot of those fragrances are honestly still in my rotation because I haven't finished all of them. I've finished a couple of those fragrances, um, but if you're curious to see what I talked about earlier this month, I will have that video linked in the description box down below, as well as at the very end of this video. And also letting you guys know that every candle that I talk about today will be listed down below. If I have any discount codes that I can offer you, those will be down below as well. Uh, the discount codes are affiliates. I do make a small commission off of those, so please only use those, those codes if you are comfortable with doing so, um, and timestamps will also be there. So I always feel like I have to get like all of that information out before we get into what we're all here for, which is the candle chat. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with a fragrance that I pulled out from my collection that I purchased last year. And this is Easter Bouquet from Yankee Candle. Now Yankee is honestly the OG brand. This is the one that started my love for home fragrance. Um, I've talked about how my mom loved purchasing from Yankee way back in the 90s. And so Yankee Candle will always hold a nostalgic special place in my heart because of that. Now this candle I purchased in 2023 because honestly the packaging sucked me in this beautiful mint colored wax with these beautiful flowers. It just screams spring. And this fragrance, when I burned it last year, I knew I loved it so much, which is kind of funny because I have never really described myself as a floral loving person. But over the years, I've come to understand that I actually do like florals. I just happen to like them in spring <laughs> and only spring. Um, but this is a lovely green. Um, it smells like a bouquet of flowers. It's not as heady as say like Lily in here. I think I pick up some hyacinth. Um, there's a green note in here. You get kind of like the stems and leaves in here. It's just a beautiful green floral type of fragrance. And like I said, I didn't want to just like throw it in a candle crock because honestly, it's still burning pretty well for me. Now you can see some of the wax is kind of like up on the edges here. And the reason that has happened is because sometimes um, I just get impatient when I extinguish a flame or, or like extinguish a candle. I move it too quickly and then the wax kind of splashes up and then it always evens out. But this has been a really nice fragrance for me. I haven't checked the Yankee website to see if they have this in a three wick. I'm actually pre-filming this video as I film, you know, I pre-film most of my videos. Um, but during this past week, we have had fragrance week going on. So um, I would, I would honestly repurchase this fragrance if it was offered in the new three wick format. Um, I talked about in the early March candle chat that I am currently burning lilac blossoms. Um, I think I will have dedicated a dedicated review on that one for you guys here on the channel this week. Um, I'll talk about at the end of this video what I have coming up pretty soon for you guys. Um, but anyways, I, that one's been performing really well for me and I've really been enjoying it. And of course, with Easter coming up next week, I feel like it is a perfect fragrance to kind of get me ready for the holiday. While we are speaking about of Easter, I went ahead and um, 
purchased this candle when it came back into stock. Now, this is one of the candles that was on my wish list. Um, I talked about a wish list video back in February, I think. And this is one of the candles that I was intrigued about when it was first released, but I didn't purchase it because again, I was trying to stick to my budget and there were other candles that kind of I prioritized a little bit more, but this one came it back into stock and I went ahead and jumped on it. And last I checked, these were 30% off on the Kringle website. This is Kringle Candles Easter Brunch. So I talked about this in the haul video that I did last week, week and a half ago, something like that. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is really nice. I think this is the fragrance. I think this is what I wanted Bath & Body Works Almond Croissant to be because this is very much, um, this one transforms on burn. This one, you get more of that savory bread note in here, like a croissant. Um, it's definitely um, a croissant note. It's not, you've got kind of that like flaky, buttery pastry type of note to it slight hint of almond, but it's not like, I felt like the almond croissant one at Bath and Body Works when the longer I burned that one, it kind of took on like a plasticky almond extract type of fragrance. This one, you do detect a slight amount of almond extract, but I feel like that really takes a back seat once you light the candle. This has been a really nice fragrance. It's been burning pretty strong for me. Um, the throw is, is good. I would give it a good solid like eight in terms of strength and throw. Now, granted, I've only burned it twice so far, um, but I have enjoyed it both times. It's really nice for the morning, evening, um, any time of day, really. But this one's really nice, especially if you're kind of going for that, like, um, if you do like a good, like Easter brunch on Easter Sunday, um, a very nice fragrance. And the packaging on this one, you guys, is just stunning. I love the, um, just the pastel colors in here with this kind of like light peach speckled glass. It's absolutely beautiful. Let me talk about a candle that I normally only burn in the like late winter. It's kind of like a transitional fragrance for me, but I have been pairing it with Easter brunch. You guys know this is one of my favorite fragrances from Bath and Body Works. This is pistachio and toasted vanilla. This is the last one that I have in my collection and I'm okay with that. Um, because I don't know, they brought it, they released it in 2022 and then they bought it, brought it back last year. So I'm confident like they're either going to bring it back again, or if not, something else will come along that I will love. But, uh, the fragrance notes on pistachio and toasted vanilla are salted pistachios, roasted vanilla almonds. This fragrance, I have said it time and time again, if you're familiar with Homeworks, there was a fragrance called Almond Flower back in like 2018, 2019. And it smells very similar. This is like a creamy pistachio note. You get a little bit of almond in here, um, but this is a very creamy type of fragrance. And so this one paired with that Easter brunch, because that has a slight almond note in there, is just a beautiful gourmand pairing. So I brought this one back out again to burn alongside Easter brunch. Talking about another fragrance that I've um, kind of brought out of the winter stash is another favorite from bath and body works this is coffee and whiskey you guys know i love this one it's one of my favorites from bath and body works bold irish whiskey splash of vanilla hint of coffee honestly you guys this is like a nice it's that kind of like vanilla marshmallow note in there but there's a tinge of like sweetness from a whiskey in here but it's not overly boozy that i think the whiskey note lends sweetness not boozy drunkenness, I guess that's the best way that I can describe it. It's, it's a very versatile candle in my collection because you're going to see the one that I'm pairing it with. And, um, you might be like, Oh, I wouldn't have thought of that pairing, but it's actually really nice. Um, strength and throw on this candle is usually around a, a solid seven to eight for me. Uh, this one performs pretty well for me. It's one that oftentimes when I see a sale at Bath and Body Works right now, I think I have two in my collection, but when I start getting to like the halfway point of this one, um, I will probably purchase another two just because this is a fragrance that I really enjoy. I also like it in the body care more so in the like fall I'll wear that. Um, but it's a nice fragrance, but the, but the one 
that, sorry, I'm trying to reach over this without um, making all of these candles crash to the floor, the tile floor. That would not be good. The fragrance that I have been burning it with is this new number 33 limited edition candle from Bath and Body Works. I did do a dedicated review on this earlier this week. Um, so that'll be linked below in case you missed it. So the fragrance notes on number 33 are espresso beans, warm vanilla, and lemon peel. And in that review, I stated that while I enjoy this fragrance, it's going to be a one and done for me. It's one that I'm glad that I didn't really like buy hordes of it. I like it. I don't love it. Um, definitely you get lemon and that warm vanilla. It's a warm vanilla fragrance in here for sure. Um, it's not unlike overly marshmallowed one. They're saying espresso beans in here. And it's funny. I smell the espresso bean note probably a little bit more on cold sniff. But when this is burning, um, honestly, you guys, it's not unique. It's not, I feel like I have smelled this before in Bath and Body Works. And I mentioned this in the dedicated review, but this candle, if I burn it in a, in like smaller spaces, so like in my bedroom or something, especially if I put it into a hurricane, it gets, there's something about it that it almost becomes too heavy for me, not too strong, but too heavy smelling where there's just something like there's a note in there that's just not hitting right for me. And I don't love it. So again, it's one and done. If you want more details about it, you can go ahead and check out that post burn review that I did earlier this week. But it is one that I plan to continue to burn and probably finish up hopefully this month. Um, and that will be that. Let's see other fragrances. I feel like I, this is like a time of month where I'm pulling a lot of candles that I kind of had set aside in my collection. And now I'm like rediscovering a love for them. So, um, I, I, um, did a video on Monday about the homework sale that they were having. And I wanted to talk about, you know, some of the new fragrances that they were launching the sale information, but I was also wanting to give you guys some of my recommendations. And so there was a candle in there that is already in my collection that I have not burned in probably close to a year and I brought it out for that video and I was like oh you need to keep burning this one because this one is so so good it was in my it's like one of those fragrances that the first time I had it I was like yep this one's being launched into one of my all-time favorites this is blueberry cheesecake from homeworks so I did decide to go ahead and bring this one out again I actually have two of these currently in my collection and spoiler alert I may have purchased another one during the homework sale this week um, fragrance notes are wild Maine blueberry cheesecake accord, blackberry jam, and brown sugar crust. So like I stated in that uh, sale video, this fragrance, and I say it every time, what you are seeing on the picture here is exactly what I smell. Now, if you're concerned about that cheesecake note being a little too lactonic and sour, it's not. Um, it, it lends a creaminess to this but it's very beautifully balanced out with the graham cracker crust with that blueberry compote on top. It's a very sweet blueberry. Personally, I think Harry Slotkin has nailed blueberry. He, his blueberry fragrances are probably my favorite. Although I will say that Kringle's blueberry muffin is pretty authentic to my nose too. But this is an absolutely stunning fragrance. It's such a good gourmand. If you want, I always say that if you are a gourmand lover, but you're also a seasonal burner like me, this is how I get my gourmand fix when the weather starts to get warmer. I kind of gravitate away from a lot of the like heavy spice fragrances and I go more for like fruity gourmands. And this one is really good. I really like pairing this with Kringle Candles, uh, lemon sugar marshmallow. I know you guys are like, we know, we know, Katie, you love that lemon sugar marshmallow and it's sold out. Although it is in the Easter Chicks two wick, um, which if that's still available, I might pick up a couple of those because that's how much I love that fragrance. But another candle that I have in my collection that actually pairs also really well with this blueberry cheesecake, again, getting, um, you know, just kind of getting a whole house fragrance thing going on here. I purchased this during candle day last year at Bath and Body Works. This is blueberry lemon sour. So the fragrance notes on here are sugared lemonade and blueberry sugar. Very basic. This is a very sweet candied lemon hint of like artificial blueberry in the background here. It's not the blueberry note that I'm getting from blueberry cheesecake, but I do tend to like blueberry and lemon fragrances together. So this is just a good sweet, like, Honestly, candied artificial sweet, which 
it says blueberry lemon sour. A lemon sour is a candy. So I'm not faulting Bath and Body Works. That is what the description is. And that is what this candle smells like. Um, so I've really enjoyed pairing this one with the blueberry cheesecake. It's a lovely fragrance combination. So that one has made its way into the rotation. And then let's see here, another Hallmarks candle that I plan to start burning here pretty soon. As soon as I finish up, I have a couple of other fragrances that are like almost done, but this is a candle that Hallmark sent to me in PR at the end of last summer. I want to say that this was probably, I received this in August and it was kind of a strange release in my opinion, because it was coming out around the same time that they were launching a lot of their fall products. But when I received it, I was like, that smells like more of a spring candle. And this candle is Wildflower Meadow. Now, honestly, you guys, I don't know if this candle is still currently available. I have not seen it on the Slatkin & Co. website. Um, if I can find it at any other retailers, I will try to have that linked down below for you. So Wildflower Meadows, fragrance notes on here are wildflowers, apple blossoms, green pear, and clover grass. So I can see with the apple blossoms and the green pear, why they were maybe thinking that this could probably be like a floral alternative for people um, going into the fall months, but they maybe don't want all of the traditional fall gourmand fragrances. Um, or maybe like even like leaf type of fragrances. This is, I think, for they were catering towards the floral lovers. This fragrance is really nice. I get the sweetness of pear in here. There's a little bit of greenness from um, that clover note in here. Apple blossoms. Um, it's not like apple. It's not, um, no, it, it's slightly floral, but it's sweet. It's like a sweet floral. Perfumey, slightly perfumey, but not musky. It's just, it's a really nice fragrance and the packaging is nice for this time of year. So this is one that I plan to burn soon. I haven't even started burning it yet, like I said, because I'm trying to finish up a couple of other fragrances. Um, but that one, that's one that I thought, you know what, this is the time, this is the time to do it. All right, another candle that I have started to burn and I'm going to try to burn it enough so that way I can do a dedicated review for you guys, but honestly, this is a fragrance that I see myself pulling out more so uh, towards the end of summer as we transition into fall and winter because this, in my mind, is more of a traditional fall or winter type of fragrance. This is Kringle Candles Sage and Palo Santo. This fragrance was sent to me in PR from Kringle. Um, if you guys happen to have missed my video, I don't think a lot of you guys did because uh, it did, I go, I, yeah, it did pretty well last week and a lot of you guys saw it. I got a lot of wonderful feedback on it. I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, but I did talk about, you know, all the, all the things people want to know about receiving PR in that video. Anyways, this is Sage and Palo Santo. Uh, I like Palo Santo fragrances, to be honest with you guys. Um, sage, I'm not really familiar with. I mean, I know what the herb sage smells like. I know I hear people talking about like saging their houses and stuff like that. Like, and I don't know, you guys, I'm, I'm going to sound weird here, but uh, I don't really care. Um, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I don't really need to be saging my house because I don't have that stuff coming into my home. But um, <laughs> anyways, I don't need to use sage, but um, I do like the fragrance on this one. Palo Santo is, is a fragrance that I really like. It's, it's like a sweet kind of resinous wood that is used in a lot of, um, in a lot of like, I want to say like healing practices or whatnot, but, um, you know, some people believe that it, um, I don't want to say that it has powers because that sounds weird. Oh my gosh. When I said powers, it made me think of, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, Nacho Libre, you know, when he says, I need the Eagle powers. <laughs> like, um, okay. I'm, I'm getting off the rails here. Um, but it's used in a lot of like medicinal thing. Um, a lot of like indigenous tribes and stuff have used it for centuries for medicinal practices. That's what I was trying to say. And I like Palo Santo. I don't know how I'm feeling so much about the sage in here. I like it. I don't love it. So it's one that I don't really see myself repurchasing. However, I do like blending this fragrance again with other candles that I have in my collection. And the reason why I think that I will bring this out more so in the fall and winter is I think that's why I'm not enjoying it as much right now because my mindset is more spring, summer, light, airy, citrus, fruit. 
this is what I will be craving come late August when I am ready for transitioning into fall fragrances. I actually plan to blend this with Kringle Candles Reserve Great Pumpkin from last year. I think that's going to be a beautiful blend. The other candle that I pulled out from my collection that I have been burning this with is another Kringle candle. This is Fireplace from Kringle. So again, like kind of like a hearth, uh, warm type of fragrance. Um, fragrance notes on Fireplace are smoke, wood, spice, herbal, amber, and vetiver. This is a really nice fragrance. You get that amber, you get the vetiver in here. It's sweet, not overly smoky, but it does, um, it does have a little bit of smokiness to it, but it's not as smoky as, say, Homeworks' Winter Fireside. Just a really nice fragrance. So those two together have been complementing each other really well, and I have been burning those in the evenings. So keep an eye out this week. I do hope to get the Palo, uh, Sage and Palo Santo review for you guys up pretty soon because I know that that's a newer release, and some of you guys have been asking me my thoughts about that one. Um, but all of these, you guys, um, are ones that I am just bringing into the rotation. Again, I still am working through a lot of the ones that I pulled out earlier this month. Um, and then other things I just wanted to touch on, I wanted to say thank you very much for your feedback on that video that I did last week, uh, last Sunday, the one that I was kind of pulling back the curtain and bearing, I want to say bearing my soul to you guys. But um, I, I received a lot of positive feedback from you all, my subscribers. You guys were so wonderful in the comment section. And it was also really encouraging because I received a lot of support from other creators in um, the YouTube and Instagram space. Um, a lot of people chimed in, a lot of people were sharing the video. So I really, really appreciate everybody who took the time to do that. Truthfully, I mentioned this over on my Instagram stories. I was a little bit nervous to film that video and share it just because I know, I know that that topic can feel um, a little divisive or people are polarizing. People have pretty strong opinions about things. And so it was kind of a way where I was being a little bit vulnerable with you. I was also sharing a vulnerability about um, like the topic that I talked touched on um, at the end of the video where I was talking about how, you know, sometimes creators, we have bias towards uh, products that we know that if we talk about them, sometimes they will get us views. And I did want to clarify something on that because I had a couple of other creators comment on there. Um, I, I just want to say I am very, very well aware that I follow a lot of other people in the community who genuinely love Bath & Body Works products. It is their favorite brand to purchase from. Um, and I definitely don't doubt that. I, I, I didn't want it to come across that I was saying like all creators only cover that brand for the views. Please don't hear that from me. I honestly was really just holding up the mirror to myself and letting you guys know that for me personally, Bath & Body Works is not my favorite brand to purchase from. They are the highest risk for me to purchase from. And yet I was sharing with you that I know that for me personally, I can't stop purchasing from them. I mean, I could if I wanted to. Nobody's nobody's forcing me to do anything. But in terms of the health of my channel and desiring to grow and also still wanting to reach a large contingent of the candle community who that is their favorite brand or that is the most that's the brand that maybe isn't even their favorite, but it's what they can afford. It's what's easily accessible to them. I don't want to eliminate them either. And so I am very well aware that I have to cover it all. So anyways, I just wanted to make that really clear. Um, if you if you happen to follow some other creators who really focus heavily on Bath & Body Works, um, they probably genuinely just love the brand and there's nothing wrong for, with that. And they don't have to apologize for that. Just like I don't have to apologize for really enjoying Kringle candles or homeworks or honestly, you guys, I try to give a fair shake to each one of them. I recognize none of them are perfect. They're going to have their ups, their downs. Um, and that's what my channel is here for is to share with you. Hey, they're doing this well, not doing this so well. So I think that's it in terms of um, wrapping up for that video. Stay tuned this week. Uh, I do have a fun collaboration video coming up for you guys on Sunday. That will be really fun. Um, one of my other favorite creators that I worked with in the past. I'm very excited to be working with again. And then next week, I plan to have a lot of dedicated reviews for you guys. Just know next weekend for Easter Sunday, um, pretty much Good Friday, um, 
and through Easter Sunday. I won't be uploading any new content just because I'm going to try to enjoy that Holy Week or, well, it's not Holy Week, Holy Weekend, I guess we'll say, uh, with my family. And then I will go ahead and upload my monthly empties video on Monday, April 1st. And that's no joke. So anyways, you guys, um, please again, hit thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to comment down below. What are some candles that you have pulled into your rotation? What are you planning? If you, if you celebrate Easter, I know Passover is not until, um, I want to say it's in April. Um, but if you happen to celebrate Easter, what, what are some of the, your favorite fragrances to be burning this week as you're preparing going into that week? Um, I always like to hear what you guys are interested in burning during this time of year. Um, again, subscribe if you're new and I want to say thank you so very, very much for spending your time here with me today. Until my next one, I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day. Bye.